So it was very interesting to see how Google's Alpha Zero played against Stockfish 8, which was the um, unofficial computer world champion previously, um, thanks to the previous TCEC Superfinal. And um, actually the main advantage that Alpha Zero had over Stockfish 8 was in closed positions, in general maneuvering, and overall with very deep sacrifices. And here was one of the sacrifices that was played, the move bishop takes g6, which is very shocking because black was very close to setting up a blockade and just playing bishop takes g5. So after bishop takes g5 here, of course, if f takes g6, we can simply take and then play knight f7 check. So bishop takes g5, queen takes g5, f takes g6. And it might look like black's very solid here, but white has the incredible breakthrough f5. And the idea being that if g takes f5, we play queen g7 check. And if the other capture, e takes f5, we have queen f6. And on the next move, we can play queen takes b6. And this shows why we wanted to deflect the pawn away from e6. An incredibly deep idea to target the black king. And um, the actual deepest idea occurs after rook to g8, where black just tries to play solidly and keep the extra piece. So here, after queen h6, which threatens queen h7 check, queen f7, white plays the incredible f6. And it's worthwhile to just look at the position here and see that white has only one pawn for the piece, but black is completely paralyzed and losing because white's able to maneuver the queen over on the dark squares. And it was just incredibly straightforward and also fascinating how, how white was able to win this because you'll pretty much almost never see a human game follow this kind of path. So black win king d8, king d2, king d7. Yeah, white had to maneuver a little bit here, played rook c1 first. Um, apparently waiting for the king to be on the d8 square, and then queen e3 was played. And one of the ideas is to play queen a3 and then queen d6 check, or to play queen c3. So here queen f8 was played, and then white played queen c3. And uh, yeah, basically to illustrate the main point, for example, if queen f7, white can play king e3, queen d7, queen a3. And then now the idea is to come into d6, trade queens and simply bring the rook down to c7 and when the rook comes down to c7 white's completely dominating and winning so in the game uh queen to b4 was played queen takes takes and rook g1 and this may not look like much but actually white's totally winning because of the terrible bishop on b7 one of white's well white's main idea is to bring the king in just to go king c2 king b3 take on b4 eventually play a5 and the king can run right through the position and you'll see that's effectively what happened in the game unfortunately we don't get to tell what game number this was because uh, alpha zero only gave us well the google team only gave us 10 games to look through but this was quite amazing how the king just ran basically straight through the position and then uh, stockfish resigned here so that was the first game that really caught my eye. That was just an incredible peace sacrifice for pure domination and pure paralysis of the opponent. There was another very interesting one here. Let me see the second one that caught my eye. Was this position here, where already in this position, black is up two pawns. And uh, you would think that if black has time to play d5 and knight c5 and get the pieces out, that white might be in trouble. White plays the move bishop g5, which is a pretty surprising move, but the threat is to play knight f6 when black's queen has very few squares. So black doesn't have that many choices besides, for example, taking on g5. Then we can just play knight takes g5, queen g8, queen h4. It's very hard to stop white from playing h6 now, and there's hardly any reasonable developmental move for black as well. The position of the rook on a8 and the knight on b8 look a little bit tragicomic here. So after bishop d3, we can play h6, and then we have queen d4. And uh, yeah, because of the bishop on d3 here, black's going to lose that piece. So for example, knight a6, we can take here, and if rook f8, we can just 
take the piece on, on D3. So this was one sample variation I was looking at here. As you can see, Black had many undefended pieces, so he was going to lose at least one of them. Um, so F5 was the most critical move as played in the game, and then White went Queen F4. So the position looks a bit comical with the both of these undefended pieces, the uh, or attacked pieces, the knight on E4 and the bishop on G5. Of course, the rook on F8 is undefended, so F takes E4 can't be played. But after H takes G5, knight takes G5, it looked like black might be able to play queen takes h5 and try to end up with an extra piece. But unfortunately, because of black's back rank, so white can play g4. Of course, if queen takes g4, we have queen h2 check and mate on h7. So queen g6, g takes f5. And here black can try knight d6, take, take. Black is still up a piece and a pawn, but white has the simple rook ad1 hitting the knight on d6 and planning to play rook e8 after that. So black is actually totally lost here. And as you can see, the knight on b8 looks quite comical here, totally out of play with no chances. So this is totally winning for white. And in the game, knight to c5 was played and white just went bishop e7. And this led to the sacrifice of a full rook temporarily. Knight d3 was played and then white just went queen to d6. And after knight takes e1, white just followed up with rook takes e1. f takes e4, bishop takes e4. And here we can see, even though we're down a rook at the moment, um, we're going to win it back. So after rook f5, white was able to play g4 very soon after, bishop h4, and then play g4 now. So black actually had the nice move rook, at rook d5, not losing all the material, but after after white took on d5 and played rook e8 check, black was completely helpless here. It might not look like white has any very serious threats, but one of the threats is just to play bishop e5 and rook e7, when g7 is incredibly weak and black doesn't really have much he can do with his remaining pieces. So in the game, black tried to go c5 and white just went queen d5 and picked up the rook. So d6, queen takes, knight d7, and then queen e4. And now with the queens coming off, um, black is just not able to defend the, this position. So I'll just show the rest of the moves very quickly. Um, the queens were traded. White eventually was able to pick up quite a few pawns. Of course, in this position, it still takes a while to win, but white was able to maneuver the bishop around and eventually pick up a pawn. Uh, it did take quite a while of maneuvering, but eventually the pawns have been weakened a little bit now. And uh, white went king g3. Yeah, there's a lot of moving around, but eventually the pawns get weaker and weaker. First one pawn drops, a couple moves later, another pawn will drop, the pawn on b5. I guess it only drops a little bit later, but uh, here he went, king h2, king g3. This part, it's, it's really not that important, but I figured I would show it anyways. So white eventually takes on b5 and slowly is able to win. Of course, now he's now up two pawns and the exchange and uh, so anyway white won this rather easily but it was very fascinating the initial sacrifice with bishop g5 in a position where it seemed like white might have been struggling for compensation but that really was not the case so let's look at one more um, here's another one which was very fascinating another position where black is up two pawns Although there is the pawn, the wedge pawn on h6 that keeps black's king on g8 locked in. Here white just played the simple rook takes c5. And this was a pretty surprising move because it sacrifices the exchange. And the plan wasn't even to recapture the pawn. It was to play queen h4. So both rooks are undefended. So the rook on e7 has to be defended. And after rook d8, rook f6 basically shuts the trap door on the queen on h8. So um, actually the queen could have been able to come out after king f8, basically um, could have played king f8 and then queen g8 and then move the rook and then play king e8 and then play queen f8. That was possible to play like this, you know, give up a pawn, go rook d8, go king e8, and then go queen to f8. And I think black would have had very good chances of surviving here. Um, but it was still a completely correct sacrifice by white and still with a very dominant position. So rook f8 was played 
and white just went queen f4 and la later played g4, g5. So g4 and the plan is just to go g5, completely shutting the black queen out of play. And my suspicion here is just that Stockfish simply missed the depth of all three of these sacrifices. And here it seemed to just misevaluate the queen position being uh, so bad on h8. So in the game, white went bishop takes d5, uh, a4, g5. Yeah, so basically with everything, uh, with the queen totally locked out, with the king in terrible shape, basically white's plan is to win the a pawn and just push the pawn straight down the board. So the game continued for a little while. Ah, I sacrificed the queen on f6, there was no chance. So eventually the, yeah, and then a4 was the end of the game. So um, it's very fascinating to see how Google's Alpha Zero was able to play these extremely deep sacrifices, which are really beautiful when you see them, but very, very hard to find in a practical game. And you see them really rarely, even in international master or grandmaster games, but it was very fascinating to see it. And I would, I would love to see Alpha Zero play the current version, development version of Stockfish or whenever Stockfish 9 comes out, but this is some really, really exciting chess.